Saborno Isaac completed solving one million calculus problems. We bugger. Hello, everyone. Let's stop you, Ruga Bugger. Let's go. Do the math. God damn it, man. All right. So. What did you learn this Ruga Bugger dance? From you, caveman. <laughs> All right. So. Let's begin. This is another problem about washers. So. We're gonna do. What do you do with the washers? You wash your car. If you don't know what washers are, first watch the review video of them from last time. What are, what are the differences between this washer and car washers? Well, washers are you know concentric circles like these. Shoot. Well, uh, washers are like concentric cylinders. It's like if you took a cylinder. So it's not car wash. Yeah, it's like if you took a cylinder and poked a hole in it. So it's not a car wash. No. Not, not I'm even. really losing my patience with you, idiot. <laughs> this is AP Calculus, not AP uh, AP Kitchen. Okay, so let's begin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the line x equals to the line x squared, y equals x squared, and then we have the line y equals zero, but that's just the x-axis. Now the question is, let's call this area bound, let's call this bound area A. Now let's rotate A about 360 degrees about the y-axis. What is the volume of the resulting shape? Now if we rotate it about the y-axis, we see that it's probably going to give us a weird valley looking thing like this. So, how are we, uh, but you see this valley has a big hole in it. So we need to calculate the area of that hole. Don't say that means anything suspicious. Okay, so now what is this point of intersection? It's two, four. What is this point? Oh, oh. Okay, so let's draw, for example, a rectangle like this. Since uh, we're going to be rotating it around the y-axis and not the x-axis, we're going to use sideways rectangles. We're going to use delta y instead of delta x. Don, don, don. <laughs> Where did you learn this dance from? From me in June of last year, 2021. So we're gonna take one of those. Oops, no, we're not doing sideways Riemann sums. Uh, okay. So this looks stupid. Okay, this looks stupid, just like the cameraman. But it's your father that hasn't stopped me before. So here is our little R, and this, of course, is our big R. So. What is our big R? Well, our big R is always just two because this is the line x equals two and it starts from the uh, y axis. So R is just two and little r is simply just x because it follows this. Okay, so we have pi times two squared minus x squared the, uh, delta y. Now we just gotta add up all of those. But before that, x doesn't look very orderly, especially when we're gonna be differentiating, uh, when we're going to take the integral with respect to y, they'll make those shapes with their face. So instead, let's solve for x in the equation y equals x squared. This just gives us x equals root y. So putting that in, we have pi times two squared minus root y squared delta y. Now we simply take the integral of this. Since we're differentiating with y, what is y min? Zero. What is y max? Four. Flat truth. So we're going to have uh, pi from zero to four of what is two squared minus root y squared? Well that's four minus y. And then this is dy. So that's a, fa a fairly standard integral. We have 4y minus y squared over 2 from 0 to 4. And if we plug in 0, we get 0. 
So this is just pi times 16 minus 8, or 8 pi. Thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you in the video. Saborno Isaac Bari, who is known as the god of mathematics, became the youngest professor in the history of mankind.